Alzheimer's disease and other dementias are the seventh leading cause of death worldwide. There is no cure for Alzheimer's and millions of people die to it every year. We all know that staying healthy, exercising and eating a balanced diet are powerful in preventing neurodegenerative diseases. However, there is an interesting interaction between sleep and neurodegeneration that can increase your risk of Alzheimer's even if you are otherwise healthy and you are exercising regularly. In this video, I am going to outline you the sleep plan that minimizes the risk of neurodegeneration. So make sure you click a like and subscribe for future videos about living longer and staying healthier. Alzheimer's disease is the most common form of neurodegeneration and it makes up 60 to 70 percent of dementia cases. After diagnosis, it shortens life expectancy by 3 to 11 years. So Alzheimer's shortens your lifespan quite a lot. And because there is no cure for it, the most reasonable thing is prevention. Getting older is the biggest risk factor for Alzheimer's and the average age of diagnosis for Alzheimer's is 74 to 84 years. The likelihood of getting a neurodegenerative disease before the age of 60 is very small and the older you get, the higher the risk becomes. The main character Characteristics of Alzheimer's disease are beta amyloid plaque outside of brain cells and tau containing neurofibrillary tangles inside the brain cells. Beta amyloid plaques start interfering with neuron to neuron communication, and the tau tangles disrupt nutrient transportation and other molecular pathways inside brain cells. This starts damaging brain tissue and causing chronic inflammation, leading to neurodegeneration or degradation of the brain tissue. The definite cause of Alzheimer's isn't clear, but excessive accumulation of beta amyloid is the most prevalent hypothesis. Preliminary human research suggests that the levels of cerebral amyloid beta accumulation in midlife already could predict faster cognitive decline later in life. This means that the beta amyloid inside the brain starts accumulating decades before you actually get diagnosed with a particular neurodegenerative condition. The same phenomenon occurs with atherosclerotic cardiovascular disease. Plaque buildup in the arteries doesn't happen overnight, nor does it happen within months even. It takes years of exposure to higher amounts of lipoproteins, inflammation and hyperglycemia to slowly accumulate plaque. Neurodegeneration is both a lifestyle and a genetic condition. It's not only caused by modern lifestyle. The older you get, the higher your risk of neurodegeneration becomes because of the natural process of aging. The reason the rates of Alzheimer's and neurodegeneration are on the rise is because people are nowadays living longer than before and more and more people are reaching the age of 80, which is the age that the risk of Alzheimer's risk really takes off. So plaque buildup in the brain is a common phenomenon in the human physiology, the same way it is with atherosclerosis. It's just that in the modern world, there are many things that can accelerate that process and worsen it. The body has mechanisms to remove beta amyloid from the brain via what's called the glymphatic system. The glymphatic system is like a waste clearance system that eliminates toxins from the nervous system. It works through an exchange of fluids and solutes between the cerebrospinal fluid around cerebral arteries and interstitial fluid of the brain and spinal cord. The exchange occurs via arterial pulsation. Most of this waste clearance in the brain occurs during sleep. During sleep, the interstitial space increases by 60%, resulting in enhanced fluid exchange between the cerebrospinal fluid and interstitial fluid. This is what helps to clear beta amyloid from the brain. The biggest genetically determined risk factor for Alzheimer's is the APOE E4 allele. However, they have found that sleeping better might attenuate the higher risk of Alzheimer's in APOE E4 carriers. So it is quite important to sleep, especially if you have the E4 allele. With age, you see a decrease in glymphatic activity in the brain, which results in the accumulation of of beta amyloid and other toxic proteins. What's more, Alzheimer's disease decreases glymphatic system activity even more, leading to a progressive accumulation. This is why it's so important to enable regular glymphatic system activity every night in your sleep to remove these toxins. So how much sleep are we talking about? The recommended amount of sleep for adults is 7 to 9 hours per night. Sleeping less than 7 hours is linked to a higher risk of heart disease, diabetes, dementia, cancer and all-cause mortality. A 2022 NHANES study on US adults found that the lowest risk of all-cause mortality was seen with 7 hours sleep per night. Sleeping less than that increases mortality and sleeping more than 8 hours was seen to be linked to higher risk as well. This might be explained by the fact that those who sleep very long might suffer from some chronic diseases like cancer or something else. When it comes to Alzheimer's specifically, then a 2024 study on English people followed for 10 years found that sleeping over 8 
hours was linked to a 64% higher risk of dementia and twofold higher risk of Alzheimer's disease. The association with dementia was predominantly seen in older adults over the age of 70 and in those who consumed alcohol frequently. Sleeping less than 7 hours was linked to a higher risk of dementia in adults younger than 70, but a lower risk in those over the age of 70. This is kind of an interesting phenomenon. The elderly people over the age of 70 who slept over 8 hours had a higher risk of dementia, which is probably explained by the same phenomenon that sick people tend to need more sleep and they want to sleep more. When it comes to sleeping less than 7 hours, then it appears to be more harmful in younger individuals in terms of risk of dementia. This might be explained by the phenomenon that sleep duration declines with age because of declining melatonin and damage to the brain's circadian system. What it means is that sleeping 7 hours appears to be a sweet spot for Alzheimer's risk, but it might be more important to sleep slightly longer if you are younger than 70 years of age. If you are younger than 70, then sleeping up to 8 hours could be even more beneficial, but 7 hours apparently is already enough. If you're over the age of 70, then 7 hours is typically what you would sleep naturally because your body produces less sleep hormones and your sleep duration declines. So 7 hours for someone over the age of 70 is actually quite a long amount of sleep and it would be probably the equivalent of sleeping 8 hours if you are younger than 70 years of age. You can think of it as the concept of pack years in smoking. The longer you smoke and the more you smoke, the more damage you expose your body to, which increases the risk of cancer and heart disease later. The same with sleep deprivation. If you sleep less than 7 hours for decades, then it might increase your risk of Alzheimer's much more compared to sleeping less than 7 hours only a few times a month. However, just sleeping isn't enough. There's also an important circadian rhythm component. It appears that NREM sleep is is more responsible for glymphatic clearance as reduced NREM sleep is associated with early Alzheimer's pathology and the accumulation of beta amyloid and tau aggregates. NREM sleep is everything that's not rapid eye movement sleep or REM sleep, which is where you see dreams. NREM sleep includes deep sleep as well as light sleep. NREM sleep occurs in the first half of the night right before you go to bed. The body goes through different sleep stages and the majority of deep sleep occurs in the first half of the night and the second half is characterized by more more REM sleep. So it is important to get to bed on time and slightly earlier to get the optimal amounts of deep sleep. It's found that sleep regularity is equally as important as the sleep duration and it could be even a bigger predictor of mortality. Another critical supporter of lymphatic drainage is melatonin. Melatonin is a hormone that supports sleep and circadian rhythm regulation, but it also has powerful antioxidant and anti-inflammatory effects. Mouse studies have shown that exogenous melatonin can cross the blood-brain barrier and enhance beta amyloid glymphatic clearance without toxicity. This is interesting because with age you see a decline in melatonin levels, which would also explain some of the decline in glymphatic system activity. That's why it's important to support melatonin production and have adequate melatonin levels. You should also have a light routine before bed to dim down the lights and avoid bright artificial lights because they suppress melatonin production. There is an association between artificial light exposure at night and Alzheimer's disease, not to mention heart disease, diabetes, obesity and cancer. What I do is wear blue blocking glasses and dim lights in my bed one hour before sleep. Supplementing melatonin might also be useful because melatonin has many other benefits related to inflammation and longevity. Before I continue, I want to briefly mention to you about one of my favorite longevity gadgets, which is the Bond Charge Infrared Sauna Blanket. It's a cheaper and more convenient way to take the sauna anywhere at any time. I've talked a lot about the benefits of regular sauna use. I believe taking the sauna regularly is the second best thing for your longevity after exercise. In fact, the sauna mimics a lot of the health benefits of exercise. The sauna is also effective for excreting heavy metals and other chemicals we're exposed to on a daily basis. The Bond Charge Infrared Blanket is made of pure leather and it's low in EMF. It's got a rating of 4.9 out of 5 based on 176 reviews, which is crazy. But I'm not surprised because I'm using the blanket almost every day and it gets the same job done as a regular sauna. Plus, it's easy to clean and you can store it under your bed. Alright, back to the video. Besides that, there are other things that support lymphatic system activity. Omega-3 fatty acids, intermittent fasting, exercise, dietary polyphenols, they all have positive effects on lymphatic drainage. Chronic stress, on the other hand, suppresses lymphatic activity. When it comes to alcohol, then high doses have adverse effects on lymphatic function, but low doses appear to have stimulatory effects. In conclusion, sleep is one of the critical components of Alzheimer's prevention. You could be otherwise healthy, you could be exercising, but if you're not sleeping enough, or if your sleep quality is bad, or if it's irregular, then it might still increase the risk of neurodegeneration, because suboptimal sleep promotes beta amyloid accumulation in the brain and the most effective way to remove that is to sleep, especially deep sleep. 
Based on the research, you want to get at least seven hours of sleep per night. But it's also equally as important to maintain sleep regularity and go to bed around the same time. If you want to learn about other things for preventing neurodegeneration, including much more, then check out my new book, The Longevity Leap. Link in the description. Other than that, thanks for watching this video. Make sure to click a like and subscribe for future videos about living longer and staying healthier. My name is Seem. Stay optimized, stay empowered.